All true saving faith turns its back on the world, turns its back on a life pursuit of sin. You see that? You see that? All true saving faith turns away from the world, turns away from a life pursuit of sin. Steve himself informed the elders, but only after the girl's father had confronted Steve and threatened exposure. So only after the girl's father threatened exposure, that's when he came to the elders. Is that even true sorrow of the sin? This was a five year, a five year relationship five years. What is that? That's a lifestyle of sin, a lifestyle of sin that a lot of people use to say, oh, if you're living a lifestyle of sin, you're going to be in hell. It's proof you were never saved. Stephen Lawson is not saved, according to many people who will watch this video, many people watching right now as I speak. There's going to be a large camp of people who watch this video who, by your own theology, what you believe about the gospel, Stephen Lawson is un saved. Now I'm going to explain what camp of people that is. And it's very important. Praise God for what has happened here because of separating the sheep from the goats and this situation exposing Steve Lawson is going to actually pinpoint and purify what the gospel actually is. And if you currently believe or teach or got lost or deceived into a false gospel, you may be saved. I was saved and got deceived into a false gospel. This video is of preeminent importance to you to watch and to understand and please be patient and stick through the end because look this is serious and so the camp who's watching me that thinks steve lawson is gonna be in hell is the people and wait for it that's actually believed what he's actually taught the stuff he's taught the people who believed in that and was following that because by his own teachings he himself will end up in hell Watch this. And by saying repent and believe, we clearly see that repentance and faith are the heads and tails of the same coin. Now, you can't have one without the other. And, and repentance, repentance is really a turning, turning away, away from, from sin, sin and self-righteousness and self so let me pause it right there. He explains repentance is a turning away from sin, which is not, that's not what it means, but he defines it as that. Repentance is a turning away from sins. Repentance is a turning away from sins. And mind you, new information was released from a very objective source of truth. This is somebody who knew Steve Lawson. And this was somebody who was trying to clear up the air because people were speculating on what type of sin uh, Steve Lawson was actually in because it was very like subjective. He's trying to clear up the air here. This tweet was eventually deleted. This is somebody who understood what Steve Lawson was actually engaging in. And there's many other people who've done videos on this already, but this is what he's saying. Look, before we continue with Steve Lawson's preaching, this is very important. Steve himself informed the elders, but only after the girl's father had confronted Steve and threatened exposure. So only after the girl's father threatened exposure. That's when he came to the elders. Is that even true sorrow of the sin? Answer that. If you're being threatened with something and then now you come and confess your sins, what is that? This was not a noble confession of sin. Inappropriate is too ambiguous as if someone merely caught them holding hands. This was a five year, a five year relationship. Five years, what is that? That's a lifestyle of sin a lifestyle of sin that a lot of people use to say, oh, if you're living a lifestyle of sin, you're going to be in hell. It's proof you were never saved. I don't believe in this, but this is what people who teach and believe in what Steve Lawson has taught. A lot of people who call themselves Christians will say, you can't live a lifestyle of sin and expect to be saved. What do you call a five-year adulterous type relationship? Five years! That you do anything for five years, that's a lifestyle. And this is what I said in my previous video. I'm like, this man was caught in an affair type relationship. You do you think that that was just a one time thing? No, that stuff builds up. It doesn't just happen one in one moment and just it, it's done. It builds up and it's a pattern of sin. So anything that's five years is a lifestyle of sin. And many people who are followers of Steve Lawson believers in Calvinism, believers in workspace righteousness, salvation. They say a lifestyle of sin is too much and you can't be saved if you're living a lifestyle of sin. So anybody who believes that, 
You can't live a lifestyle of sin and be saved. You have to admit that Steve Lawson hasn't been saved this whole time. At best, he just got saved when he confessed his sin. But then again, as the first tweet mentioned, Steve informed the elders only after he was essentially forced to, when the girl threatened that he was going to expose the guy. So this was a five-year relationship with strong romantic overtones. Both parties insist no literal fornication was involved. Who knows? They could be lying. And it seems that this guy, Phil, thinks they're lying. But there, because he says this, but their tie to one another was adulterous in spirit, if not in fact. Again, this is somebody who knows the situation, who's trying to bring clarity. Try to bring clarity. That's his point, because he doesn't want people just to speculate. Trying to bring clarity to the situation, because the elders were just very subjective about what actually happened. People were speculating. This was the whole point of him making the tweets. All this is not hearsay. This is objective facts trying to bring clarity to the situation. The next tweet, he is 73, she's in her late 20s. A lot of people are like focusing on the age gap. Like that's not a sin. Just the age gap itself is not a sin. The thing to focus on that is a sin is that Steve is married. He is married. If he wasn't married, if he was single and was just dating somebody, that age difference is not sin in and of itself. Age, she's in it. They're both adults. They're both adults, okay? You may think that's weird. You can think what you want, but they're both adults. As there's no sin in the specific age gap alone, but it's sin because he is married. <laughs> That's adultery. That's adultery. She is not a member of his church. In fact, she lives in a different state, nowhere close to any of the ministries Steve served. I don't believe any good in would be served by exposing her identity to the public. Again, this is not hearsay. This is objective facts trying to bring clarity to the situation. And so a five-year relationship five years yo that is a lifestyle so now in a second we're going to go back to the video that steve lawson was preaching to show you the hypocrisy of what he's taught and what people who believed what he's taught anybody who's watching this video who's previously believed what steve lawson has preached you need to repent and change your mind of that question it obviously Obviously, what he's teaching is hypocritical because he can't even follow his teachings. He can't even abide by his teachings. He can't even live up to his teachings. Turning from sin. It's a turning away from all of your feeble efforts to commit Listen. yourself to God. It is turning away with a broken spirit from the broad path headed for destruction and a life pursuit of sin. See, it's turning away from the broad path of a life headed for destruction. And he connects that with turning away from sin. No, the broad path is not believing. Sinning does not send you to hell if you believe. The whole reason Jesus came to the earth was to die for our sins. So if we would believe on him, he's God, he, was, he died, he was buried, he resurrected, he shed his blood for remission of sins. If we would trust in that, trust in that sacrifice for the forgiveness of sins, we would be saved. Belief is what takes us away from the broad path to destruction. Belief is a narrow way that leads to life. Is the way that leads to life is belief, not turning from sin. That's the actual work. That's something you do. It's on you to turn from sin. Oh, I mean, Muslims stop sinning. Muslims can stop watching adult films. They can stop getting drunk. They can stop doing drugs. They can stop doing certain things that are wicked. Does turning from sin save the Muslim though? No, it's about what you believe in. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is Yahweh? That he is God Almighty, that he resurrected from the dead, that he shed his blood for the remission of sins, and that that sacrifice forgives your past, present, and future sins completely? And there's nothing that you can do to earn salvation. Do you believe in that? Because that is what saves you. Turning from sin is a good thing. You should turn from sins. It has nothing to do with salvation, though. It's just something that you should do. You should do that. Don't have nothing to do with saving you. But you see how he connects that? He's teaching works very so subtly. That's how the devil operates. Has he turned from sin? No, he's lived a lifestyle sin based on his teachings. Proof. He wasn't saved. Not what I believe, what he believed and what he taught and what his followers believed. And so you really, if you previously believed what he taught, Calvinism, any of that stuff, perseverance of the saints, 
any of that stuff. You need to question all of it and understand that this is backloading works into the gospel. It is a turning away from that, and then saving faith is a turning to the Lord Jesus Christ. When you turn one, you turn the other. When you turn away from, you turn two. All true saving faith turns its back on the world, turns its back on a life pursuit of sin. See that? You see that? All true saving faith turns away from the world, turns away from a life pursuit of sin. Works. Can you, if you don't see that right now, if you don't see that right now, I can't help you. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. He's teaching works. It, it should be clear. It should be abundantly clear. Anybody who's in his camp, of Calvinism or of whatever, in his camp that, that follows his teachings, that is in alignment with his teachings, that supports his teachings, the ministries that supports his teachings, the, the YouTubers that used to follow him and recommend him and, and like this content and promote his content, anybody in this camp, this reformed uh, Calvinism, whatever, what have you, you need to question everything. You need to question everything except your belief in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't question that. But everything around what salvation was, what they taught salvation was, what they taught a true Christian was, besides belief in Jesus, throw that away. Throw that away. You don't need to turn from sin to be saved. That's a work. It turns the heart and the soul to the only Savior there is, Jesus Christ. Repentance is really the, the, the repentance that is, is entered. So he don't even know what he's talking about. He's having a hard time explaining this because he might know what is coming out of his mouth as BS. He might actually know that. I don't know. <laughs> Twine. <laughs> That's what wolves do. They know what they're teaching is, is wrong. And they still teach it. With true saving faith. Let me say it again. Wherever there is true saving faith, there is repentance. And, and, he, and he defines repentance as turning from sin. So you have to stop sinning to have true saving faith. Not the gospel, folks. That is not the gospel. In fact, many places in the Bible... But, 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 Nagy. But, but, Nagy. Jesus told the adulterous women to go and sin no more. Yeah. Amazing. We should refrain from sin. But was Jesus expecting her to never sin again? No. In that specific circumstance, Jesus was explained to not engage in that certain sin because that is dangerous. What she was engaging in, she could be stoned in the future. Like, of course, Jesus is not going to promote sin. So yeah, Jesus is going to say, stop sinning. But Jesus expects nobody to be perfect. Everybody says that Jesus told adulterous women to stop sinning, go and sin no more. Well, can you stop sinning all the time for the rest of your life? Can you be sinlessly perfect? Can you engage in sinless perfection? If you can't, well, you're taking that scripture out of context. Jesus never expected that woman to be perfect for the rest of her life. So many people take that out of context. It is impossible on this side of eternity to engage in sinless perfection. We can't because we have the flesh. We do not have our glorified bodies. We cannot do that on this side of eternity. Repentance is used uh, almost as a synonym for saving faith. John the Baptist, when he preached in Matthew 3, verse 5, said, Repent. You hear all this stuff he's talking about, repentance and turning from sin, and then that's equal to saving faith. <laughs> Again, remember what this man just did for five years? Remember? Five years now, in an adulterous relationship. Five years, a lifestyle of sin. And he's talking all this mess that he cannot live up to himself. Now, some more hypocrisy. Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. My name's Joe Kirby. I'm a street preacher, and my heart's desire is to see people saved. Do you think that that is a massive problem that young men uh, have in the world, is purity today? Um, I do. I do. I think uh, a lot of young men fight pornography, and they excuse it. And Jesus said, if your right eye causes you to stumble, meaning to look on another woman with lust, Jesus was so radical, he said, rip it out mm. and throw your right eye away. It would be better for you to re pluck out your right eye than for you to go to the fiery hell. Mm. In other words, you're going to hell mm. if you don't repent. You, you are showing me you're not even a... Yo. 
He's associating lust, the sin of sexual immorality, is taking you to hell. If you don't repent. Now, what is this repent term? All these false teachers are super ambiguous with this term, but he classifies it. This is how he teaches it now. He teaches repentance. It's a turning away from sin. So guess what? By his own standard, by his own teaching, he is going to hell because he didn't repent. He didn't repent until maybe just now. Again, the best case scenario for Steve Lawson is he just now got saved when he stopped. When he stopped being in that adulterous relationship, he just now got saved. Best case scenario, I still don't think he's saved. But for this whole time, up until this point of him teaching, of him preaching, of him being in ministry, he hasn't been saved by his own standard because he did not truly turn from his sins. He was living a lifestyle of sin. He wasn't living a repentant lifestyle. Five years in an adulterous relationship. What is that? It's a lifestyle of sin. Based on what he's teaching and what people in his camp's teaching, he isn't saved. It's so clear. It's so clear. I'm not saying that. This is not what I teach now. Lots of people were saying I was slandering Steve Lawson. I'm slandering what he's teaching. No, it's getting worse and worse. You're seeing the news drop and people, they should repent for saying I'm slandering Steve Lawson. No, look at his situation. It's getting worse. And this is exactly what he's teaching. I wasn't lying on him. He teaches a works-based salvation. It's subtle. He may not admit it, but he is teaching it. This is what people do. This is what Satan does. He teaches something and he doesn't admit it. Oh, I'm not teaching it this. I'm not teaching this. I'm not trying to tell you this. I'm not going to tell you anything evil. But then he teaches something evil. Oh, I don't teach works. But then he teaches works. <laughs> this is what all these false teachers do. Oh, you don't need works to be saved, but then they teach works to be saved. All these false teachers do this, including Steve Lawson, including Calvinists, all Calvinists. Let me give you a prime example. Perseverance of the saints. And I told people this in my last video. Steve Lawson did not persevere. He did not persevere because he fell into this affair relationship type thing. He did not persevere. And people are like, oh, this is not perseverance of the saints means. This is not perseverance of the saints means. Think about it. Perseverance. What is that about? Is that about God persevering or you persevering? It's about you persevering. This is what they teach. What I rather say, what I rather explain that the Bible teaches is preservation. God preserves us. He literally seals us unto the day of redemption. We are eternally secure. He seals us unto the day of redemption. We don't have to persevere because that's something put on us that we have to do. And we're not saved by works. Let me give you a scripture really quick, really quick. Romans 3.24. Romans 3.24, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. We are justified. We are declared righteous freely. It's a free gift of God by God's grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. Now look at what perseverance of the saints is. This is Lyinger Ministries, which Steve Lawson is associated with. Lyinger Ministries, straight from this ministry. The title is saying, is there a difference between once saved, always saved, and the perseverance of the saints? Listen to what he teaches. In the strictest sense, I think they, they mean the same thing. No, they don't. Um, namely, that uh, those whom God has saved, he will preserve and not allow to fall away. I, I think it is legitimate to ask, are those two ways of speaking uh, equally useful? And I, I think probably the question comes out of a fear that if you say once saved, always saved, it, it sounds like a carte blanche to go live any way you like. It sounds kind of antinomian. Uh, God is stuck with me now that I'm saved, so I can live the way I want, and he still has to save me. Uh, I mean, not to me. I don't believe that. The Bible teaches eternal security. You are sealed unto the day of redemption. That's what the Bible teaches. I don't think it's a license to sin. I don't look at it that way. I don't take advantage of God's grace just because I know once I'm saved, I'm always saved. This is what these people always say and slander our viewpoint with. Stuck with me now that I'm saved, so I can live the way I want, and he still has to save me. Um, I don't think that's probably what the original once saved most of the original once saved, always saved people meant, but I, I can see how that's a concern and a potential danger. Whereas the perseverance of the saints uh, stresses that we live as saints perseveringly. We go on living as saints. We go on pursuing holiness. And so it's all about what you do, how you live your lives. 
perseverance of the saints. This is what they teach. How you live your life, the lifestyle that you live, shows if you are a true believer, right out of the guy's mouth, and he's about to backpedal a little bit because he realizes that he's teaching works. <laughs> I think he caught himself like, this is too obvious. Let me backpedal and not let people think that I teach works. Watch this. Living by faith. And I think as a matter of Christian living, that's a more helpful way to think, uh, that we have to persevere. But we don't want to turn our responsibility to persevere into a works righteousness either. So, But that's what it is. That's what it is. If you're responsible to persevere, if you're looked to to persevere to prove that you're a Christian, that's what it is. It is works. <laughs> <Look>. <coughs> Excuse me. We don't want always to link uh, our perseverance. We want to link our perseverance to our confidence in God's preservation. What does that even mean? It sounds, like he's mix, it sounds like he's mixing works and grace. It sounds like he's mixing works and grace there. And I'm sure he is. It's in God's preservation. So perseverance and preservation are good to link and keep together. No, because you don't have to persevere to be saved. You don't have to persevere to be saved. This is what the Calvinists teach. The P in tulip, the last letter in tulip, the T, the U, the L, the I, the P, perseverance of the saints, all of it's wicked. And this is the last letter perseverance it is on you i'd rather say preservation because preservation puts it on god god preserves us he literally seals his children you are sealed unto the day of redemption ephesians 4 30. you are preserved you don't persevere it's on you at that point do, do these people understand do these people understand that christianity is not about what you do this is the whole reason that the faith exists this is what separates our faith from every other religion because it's not about us it's about what christ did on the cross it's not about us but these calvinists and these wicked works based heretics they're very subtle they won't even admit it they won't even i'd rather you just admit it i'd rather you just admit it yes you need works to be saved i'd rather you just say it like the Hebrew Israelites. Just say you need work. Just say it, please, and stop being deceptive and subtle like the serpent, like the devil himself. Just say it. But no. They'll just say, Oh, you gotta you gotta persevere in good works. You gotta persevere in being and seeking a holy lifestyle. You gotta persevere in refraining from sin. You gotta persevere in turning from your sins. Well, guess what, guys? It's a Dr. Steve Lawson persevere in good works and refraining from sin. Being in an adulterous relationship for five years, did he persevere or did he not? Oh, wait. He didn't. He did not. So, either he was never saved or he just got saved. That's the best case scenario. He just got saved. He just got saved. He's a babe in Christ now. Steve Lawson is a babe in Christ now because he just repented. He just turned from his sin as this is what they teach repentance is. Turning from sin, that's not what repentance is. True repentance is a change of mind from unbelief to belief because belief is what saves you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Belief is what saves you, folks. And I'll end it there. I'll end it there. May the Lord keep you saints. May he shine his face upon you always and give you peace. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen.